My name is Adam. I have a wife and two young boys. I have a four-year-old son and a two-year-old son. The concept of getting in a big trip away with your children before you start school is a bit of a trend. That was what we did. We, we took a five and a half, nearly six month journey and embarked on what they call the half loop around Australia. We went from about middle of central coast, straight west, all the way up to Broken Hill, down through Port Augusta in Adelaide, all the way through the guts, all the way up to Darwin, and then followed that west coast of Western Australia all the way down and around and all the way back to where we live at Bulleye. What was surprising to us is, is our favourite destination was probably the southwestern side of WA. Um, that included places like Bustleton, Bunbury, Margaret River, um, Albany, Denmark, Esperance, and then that, that journey across the Nullarbor, Nullarbor Plain. Uh, it was pumped up to us to be this big scary adventure, but I'll tell you what, I've had the, the best steak I've ever had in my life was on the Nullarbor Plain. So this was a bit of an interesting story. Rio Tinto nearly crashed one of their road trains into another road train near the Karangini National Park. And at that point, we had the option of, when we pulled up to that, we had the option of turning around and going four hours backwards the way we came or we had the option of going down a random dirt road about an hour out of Karangini National Park and just going down this random dirt track. We took the dirt track option. The caravan did very well. It was that, you see that stereotypical red dirt that just gets everywhere. We turned up at our destination, the caravan was orange, the car was orange, obviously you can see they're both white. Um, and then we turned up there there was nothing wrong with the caravan at all and I opened up all the hatches and it was clean as a whistle inside. So in that circumstance, with that level of heavy, you know, gradiated road, gradient road, um, it did very well. I was very impressed. Considering it's only 16 foot long, you would think you get a bit of that sort of cabin fever. I mean, which if it was raining the day and day and night repeatedly for a long time you'd have those difficulties where you just want to get it get the kids outside but because it's sort of that hybrid system um, I could pull out the awning I could tie it down we had a shade that connected into the Fiamma awning which gave us a big outside area I also had a nice inside area um, and opposite the the two bunk beds you've got a quite a large bench bench seat with us with a folding table so in the event that you know, we did have a rainy day or two. I could set the boys up in there on that table. I could turn it to where I needed it to be. Um, they could watch a movie or something like that in relative comfort. Um, but also if they needed to go outside, we had a little toy tent, which we could set up just underneath our awning and they could go in there and do that. So in terms of that sort of cabin fever, which you, you would expect, it performed really well. So very happy with that. So wherever you go in Australia, uh, you, you'll see this in some of the photos that I've sent through. You always are parked to some kind of cub camper. I mean, people had 15-year-old, 25-year-old, 30-year-old fold-out camper trailers. And whenever we pulled in, they'd look and they'd go, oh, that's a cub. Do you mind if I have a look? So, I mean, we had some people that probably overstepped the boundaries there. I had one gentleman just stick his head straight in. He said, do you mind if I have a look? And then went straight in there. So... That was a little bit interesting, but no, wherever you went, there was always a cub, a fellow cub traveller, uh, and they were always very interested. They always wanted to see how ours performed first, and then they were considering making the, making the change themselves. So when it comes to the L16, this is the baseline model, essentially. Uh, there's no inverter in this system. Apart from the, the, the bottom specs, which is the, the standard inclusions, the only extras that we got put on was the air conditioning unit because where we were headed was going to be 45 degrees and the Evercool uh, 110 litre fridge. Uh, that's it. And in terms of the electrical system, they did just fine. I mean, we chopped and changed between off-grid and then Discovery Parks or G'day Parks. And with the combination of those two, you could prepare your meals accordingly, you could do everything you needed to do and not once was I ever really concerned about battery power. We left, we left the caravan for five days in storage while we went to Rottnest Island and returned to have 100% battery capacity. So the simple 12 volt system, I mean it's, it's backed by Red Arc so everything Red Arc seems to be very good. 
Uh, it performed great. You can run the fridges basically forever. I think I've got 220 litres of fridge storage. You can basically run that forever and you've got no issues. Christmas at home is normally a big event for us. We normally have the big family home and everyone comes around to our house. So we did have concerns that it was going to be quite difficult. But you know what we pulled up in, uh, I believe it was Port Lincoln. We've got a big uh, concrete site there set everything up, put the festoon lights and the Christmas lights around the caravan, stuck up the stickers, as you can see, which are still there. And we ended up gathering friends during that time period. So we set up and they came and joined us and we had our little set up with our tables and chairs and everything. And it was, it was special, it was nice. My what is it? Nice. Nice. <laughs> When it comes to the, the scenic locations, you probably have to start doing um, some off the grid work. So you, you're, you're probably not gonna find the most scenic place next to your Discovery Park in the middle of Perth. Um, the, what, we, what we found was those, those moments where we just pulled to the side of the road in the middle of nowhere and set up with no facilities around seemed to be where we had the most picturesque sunsets, the best views, uh, and probably the biggest surprises. So we, we pulled into, I think it was called the Devil's Marbles on, on the Northern Territory with no intention of staying there, uh, with very, very limited facilities and ended up being one of the most picturesque places we went to. And that was considering we had just left Uluru. So um, yeah, the more, the more you go off the beaten path a little bit, the more the scenery seems to come forward. When it comes to caravans in general, there is no perfect fit. So, I mean, if you want ultimate top end luxury with a big rig that's say 24 foot or longer, you've got all the drawbacks of the extra towing weight. You're gonna have to upgrade your regular car. You're gonna have to purchase yourself like a Ram or a um, 300 series Land Cruiser. And that's a big purchase. Where when it came to the Cub, the reason we're so satisfied with it is I have a baseline BT50 entry level car and I can just hook this thing up and go. So if you're thinking of just a family caravan that's going to fill all the purposes of a you know wife and two kids, uh, I don't see there being a better option than what we've got here, especially for New South Wales. So no one's going to have a huge family plot in the middle of a Sydney area that they can park this huge caravan in. Um, not everyone's got the budget to get a $200,000 RAM. Um, no one's, you know, things you have to take into consideration as well is this thing did about 14 to 14 and a half litres per 100 k's. Uh, I could get about 450 kilometres to a tank. And when I spoke to other people with bigger rigs who have lost the mobility, they were doing 25, 26, 28 litres per 100 k's. So in terms of your all rounder, um, I don't think you can go past it. It's got a light turbo weight, it's two ton, it turns on a dime. Um, I would definitely recommend it for the entry level family.